Okay, in this video, we're going to look at code development on the Arduino Nano and over-the-air programming. So this is my setup. I have an Arduino Nano mounted on a breadboard, and I have an HC06, and I got my 9-volt battery, which is my onboard power supply. Now this 9 volts is feeding the V-in of the Arduino Nano, and a 5-volt regulator on board is feeding 5 volts back out to the HC06, powering up the, uh, the module. So the HC06 module is a Bluetooth to serial. That's fed into the serial port of, of the Nano. So that's how I gain access to the serial port for programming. Now I could use the USB connector and plug that into the Nano and power up the Nano and gain access to the serial port through the USB. And I sometimes do that if I want to save uh, battery power. But with this way I have a total wireless system. There's no wires connected up to this uh, module so it's totally self-contained. And I have four LEDs connected to four GPIO lines and that's my uh, prototyping area. So I just have those uh, LEDs there for, for demo purposes. So I can gain access to my Nano through a laptop or a smartphone or a tablet through the HC06 Bluetooth module and I can upload code either through a, t a text file or on the keyboard. So then I have my self-contained, totally wireless module that I could use for uh, code development and over-the-air programming. Okay, I have my Bluetooth module on my breadboard paired to my smartphone. And I have an app running on my smartphone to control the LEDs on the breadboard. So if I press some buttons on my app, you can see I'm controlling the LEDs. So what I'm doing, I'm sending serial data to the Bluetooth module into the Nano then the Nano is controlling the GPIO pins to control the LEDs. So I can turn all the LEDs on, I can control them all off. And it's all done wirelessly. It's totally, there's no wires on my breadboard, it's totally clean. So it comes in very handy. Say if you want to control a machine, say monitor, if you want to modify the operation of a machine or monitor it with a logging program, you could place this anywhere on the machine in a convenient area because there's no wires. Then you could use your laptop to monitor the machine and you could be within Bluetooth distance of the machine using your laptop. Now if you want to control or if you want to monitor some certain points on the machine, you could hook up some wires to the certain areas and then bring the wires to this little module like this. It's a little dip uh, module that has eight solder cups. And you could solder a uh, stranded wire into there. So you could hook up the wires into uh, different points on the machine and plug it into the breadboard then use the prototyping area to build a little circuitry for logging or for controlling the machine. Now you could also do this from anywhere in the world by using TeamViewer. If you have a, a laptop that's uh, within Bluetooth range and you have internet access to the laptop, you could actually get into this uh, the machine from anywhere in the world using TeamViewer. Okay, if you want to monitor and control your test machine for a long period of time, I wouldn't advise using this breadboard as we see it here, because after a while your battery's going to die. And it's got some fragile components, like the HC06 module, so you want to have some protection of your circuitry. So what I would do is I would mount this circuitry into an enclosure, similar to the one like this. So you take the circuitry, and you solder every, all your circuitry onto a Vero board, then mount it in an enclosure. And you can see there's a voltage regulator, you can match it to the voltage input from the machine. And there's your power wires, and then there's your control and sense wires that's going out to your machine. So now you can hook this up, put it in a box, and it's protected, and it's powered by the machine so you don't have to worry about the batteries. So you can just close it up, and now you can still gain access to, the, to this box through Bluetooth uh, locally, or from anywhere in the world over the internet using TeamViewer. Okay, my HC06 Bluetooth module on my breadboard is paired to my computer. And I'm running TerraTerm on my computer, which is a serial terminal program. So when I type some keys on the keyboard, I'll be sending ASCII character codes wirelessly through the Bluetooth module into the Arduino Nano through the serial port. Now I could send some control commands uh, wirelessly to the Nano. I could turn on the onboard LED, which is on pin 13 on the Nano, and it's actually the third LED on the breadboard. So if I send the command LED on, LED comes on. If I type LED off, if I turn it off, if I type blink LED, it will blink LED, that's on pin 13. If I type any key, it will turn it off. 
So I, act, I could actually write some code on the keyboard and actually send it uh, wirelessly into the Nano because I have onboard interpreter and compiler running. But what I usually do, I write everything using Notepad, then I send a whole text file all at once uh, using Terraterm. So we're all ready to do some over-the-air programming using Bluetooth and our Arduino Nano. Okay, here's a text file of code that we're going to send over the air to the Arduino Nano. Now this file is called stepper text. So this code will run a stepper motor for the Arduino Nano and it's written in fourth, the fourth programming language. So in fourth we build words. So we build a bit of code, we write a bit of code, usually a small chunk of code, and we test it over and over again until it's bulletproof and it works properly. And then we give it a name. So, so in this example, here's the code that we here's the code that we wrote, and this is the name that we gave it. So that name will be put into a dictionary, and at the OK prompt, if you type the word "kill," it will run this code. So we keep building these little words. So here's another word called "energize." So if we type "energize" at the OK prompt, this is the code that's going to run. So as as we build more and more words, we could use those words to build other words. So if we look down here, clockwise step. So if I type that, it will actually move the stepper motor one step clockwise, and that's the code that it will run. And another word is counterclockwise step. And there's more commands is clockwise, counterclockwise, steps. So if we type 20 steps, you'll turn the stepper motor 20 steps, and there's the code that it will run. And here's a word called rotate 180, so it will rotate 180 degrees. And if you look at the code, it's 24 steps. Now this word steps here is the same word as up here so when this is run all this code will run and if you look in the word steps we got CW step which we which we built up here so as you can see we're building upon the words we're building more and more we're building the words up as we go along until we come down to the almost last the, la the last uh, word is spin motor and that will spin the motor uh, continuously and there's the code that will run and then the word stepper where we actually map the stepper control to the keyboard, so you use the plus or minus keys to turn a stepper motor. So there's an example of how we program in fourth, and we'll take this text file and we'll upload it over the air to the Arduino Nano. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, so I'm ready to upload stepper.txt file over the air up to the Arduino Nano. So I'm paired to the HC06 Bluetooth module. So if we select file, and then send file and select stepper.txt so now we're compiling so it's compiling in real time and as you can see every time a word is compiled and it's compiled properly we'll get an OK at the end of the sentence so if there's any errors any mistakes in syntax are actually in the programming We'll get an error telling us uh, what the error is, but so far I could just see OKs at each each end of the sentence. So we're, so we're compiling all these words into the dictionary. So each one of these words is compiled into the dictionary and used as building blocks, kind of like building with Lego. So word by word, block by block. So as she's compiling, you can see we're still looking. It's looking good. There's no errors, and we're almost coming to the end here. The last word is stepper. Actually, compile OK. And the very last word is flush. It flushed it into the flash of the Arduino Nano. So all the words are in a dictionary. So now we could use each one of these words in the, in the program. And if we could actually look in the dictionary, there's all the words in the dictionary, and you can see the on the very first word is stepper because that's the last word that we that we compiled. And the next one is spin motor and rotations. So now we could use these as other building blocks to build other programs. So there's an example how we can upload code over the air using Forth and using the HC06 Bluetooth module to program the, the Arduino Nano over the air.